Christian Rob McGregor welcome you to a place where all kinds of phenomena flourish. Voices whisper, ancient secrets, signs and symbols are abundant. UFOs, ETs, ghosts, and even the dead move about freely. Here we meet authors, researchers, and investigators of the mysterious, the strange, and of the inexplicable anomalies that surround us. Step out of the everyday world and take a journey into the mystical underground. Welcome to the Mystical Underground. Thank you for joining us. This is Trish McGregor and Rob McGregor, our producer and tech magician, John Posey. You can go to themysticalunderground.com where we make regular blog posts and where you can find out about our books. Among them are Phenomena, Harnessing Your Psychic Abilities, The Secrets of Alien, Secrets of Spirit Communication, Sensing the Future, and Aliens in the Backyard. Our latest book is called Mind Blowing Synchronicities, The Latest Science Stories and Research. Trisha's latest novel is White Crows, and Rob's most recent novel is called Tulpas. If you're watching us on YouTube, we would appreciate it if you take a second to click the like, subscribe, and notification button so you never miss an episode. If you prefer to listen to the show, it's available wherever you listen to podcasts. Please subscribe there. Also, if I'm an astrologer, so if you want your chart done, email me through the Zoom website. Our guest today is Jill Jackson. Rob. Okay, uh, Jill is a spiritual teacher and psychic medium. She is the recipient of the Psychic of the Year Award for 2015 and 2016 from Best American Psychics, as well as its uh, 2014 Social Activism Award for her volunteer work with animals. Uh, Jill is the author of Manifesting Your Magic in the 5D going beyond the laws of attraction. Her earlier book, I thought, had an eye-catching title, Mississippi Medium, My Journey from Southern Baptist to Talking to the Dead. In her previous life, this time around, Jill was a certified public accountant in Los Angeles. She lives in Mississippi now with her husband, uh, Daniel, who is also a medium, and their five dogs. Uh, Jill and her husband, lead spiritual retreats to vortex power spots around the world. Welcome, Jill. Glad Thank to you, have Rob. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Trish. I like your uh, picture back here of the, uh, the phases the of the moon. moon. Yeah, that's yes, cool. Yes, I, I love that picture. Thank you. Yeah. So how does, uh, Jill, how does one go from being a certified uh, public <laughs> accountant to a psychic medium? Tell us about your journey, please. <laughs> Yeah, great question. Uh, well, I was born able to see the spirit world. I've been able to see spirits since I was a child. But like many of us, uh, you know, we try to, to be normal and fit into the normal world. So I went to college, became a money manager, CPA, uh, did that for a while in, in Southern California. And I, I was doing quite well financially, but I was not on my path. So I got sick. Uh, multiple times and finally decided to start listening to my own spirit team, encouraging me to jump off the cliff and leave that comfortable, abundant, crazy and fun lifetime, lifestyle and join this crazy, fun <laughs> and uh, <laughs> mystical lifestyle. And so that's that's what I did. Right. Well, now, as an animal communicator, what are some of your most memorable experiences with animals. I mean, you've got five dogs. We've got one and he's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I love animals uh, m many, many times more than some people, you know, because <laughs> animals are, are unconditional. <clears throat> but I'll, I'll, I think of a funny story right now. I was talking to uh, this dog for one of my clients and she was newly engaged and her fiance had moved into the house and her dog started being really mean to him and not making him feel welcome so she scheduled a session and so the first thing her dog said to me was he stinks ah! and I said what, what do you mean he stinks and uh she said I, I just don't like him he he smells and and uh so I asked the dog to you know describe it further and she said that 
perfume was or the uh, cologne was so over powering and uh the, and so i said that to the woman and she started bursting out laughing she said i have tried to tell him that he wears way too much <laughs> cologne and uh and i said well the dog is obviously using that as uh you know an excuse so i just talked to the dog and said there's room for the growing family let's learn if he promises to stop wearing so much cologne will you <laughs> promise to start being nicer to him so that it was hilarious how the dog had to tell me that uh, about the cologne. As you were talking, one of our, our cats came up and patted my leg, like saying, hi. <laughs> yes. Hello, hello there. Um, I, I have another funny story with a pig. I went to an animal rescue <laughs> farm one time and I, I told the guardian, don't tell me anything about any of the animals. Let me just go around and see what they have to say. And uh, so I went to this one pig and he was so proud and he showed me that he had a crown on top of his head and, and he said, do you know that I'm royalty? And, uh, <laughs> and he showed me this crown. Well, the, the guy that runs the place started laughing and he said, well, jokingly, we call him uh, King Charles. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that pig was letting me know that he loved being royalty. <laughs> you know, I, I, I have to interject here because we've been doing the podcast for almost three years. This is the first story about communication with a pig. So yeah, that's the first. That's unique. Uh, but how, how do they how do they interact with you? How do they speak? I mean, I know it's uh, mind to mind, but it's yes, telepathic, and uh, it's just the same type of communication that humans have through telepathy. And uh, animals communicate with each other that way, and they communicate with uh, us as animal communicators as well. Do they give you with images? Yes. So it depends on what your particular gifts are. I am clairvoyant and clairaudient and clairsentient. So all different ways they'll, uh -huh. they'll talk to me telepathically. And then like with the one pig, he did show me the image <laughs> with the crown on top of his head. So it just kind of comes, comes uh -huh. in many different ways. That's okay, funny. Cool. So uh, when you were a child, uh, you said you were having psychic experience. Well, what were those like? Uh, what kind of things were you experiencing and how did that relate to other people in the world for you? Yeah. So these psychic um, abilities came in later. It was the mediumship abilities that came in first where I was able to see the spirit world walking around my house with my eyes wide open. But back then I could not hear them. Uh, I could only see them. My uh, clear audience had not kicked in yet. And so it was kind of confusing for me because I could just see them walking around my house and trying to get my attention, but I could not hear them at the time. When my grandmother passed away, I was 12 years old, and that was my first experience hearing clear audiently through the telepathy. She showed up floating above my bed and in full form and telepathically told me not to worry about her anymore. She wasn't sick, that she had her health back, and that the other world, what some call heaven, I call it the other world, um, is just so beautiful and that she was in a really good place. So that was huh. when the clear audience started and I could start hearing at that point. Did you tell your parents about that experience? Yes, I actually ran in my mother's room. Now, my mother was a medium also, but we didn't talk about it a lot. She never wanted the responsibility to offer herself professionally. And I ran in her room and told her that Gran, I told her about the entire visitation. And she told me that Gran had been in her room that same evening. And then my grandmother started opening the jewelry box, pulling it out so that the music would play. And she did that for the next three nights just to, again, Tell us hello and to let huh. us know that she was good. Well, that's pretty interesting, interesting story. So uh, can you tell us the story of how you prepared to meet your husband, uh, Daniel? Uh, you, you have an interesting uh, discussion about that in your book. Yes. Uh, so uh, one of my uh, colleagues, I had mentored her for years. I had She had come to me for a reading in Southern California I told her in that reading that she was going to be doing the same thing I was doing years down the road. And uh, at first she didn't believe it. And so she started studying with me and mentoring 
with me. And one day she received this download and told me that I was getting ready to meet my future husband, who was my twin flame. She told me that he would have a love for uh, shoes. And she told me he was 5'11". She told me he had long hair and a ponytail. And she told me that uh, his name would start with a D and that I would meet him like in an upscale kind of uh, bar restaurant. So, uh, you know, I, I kind of filed that away. And one night I was uh, in Asheville, North Carolina, uh, left a, a play, walked into a wine bar to get one glass of wine before walking home for the night and in walks uh, Daniel and he had everything she said other than the long hair. And I had never told him uh, all the details. I just said, my friend predicted you. And, you know, it, the, right away he started talking about how much he loves shoes. And I was kind of <laughs> laughing to myself like, okay. Then I, I called her and told her, I said, you were spot on with everything except the ponytail and she said i'm telling you i saw it i don't know what's up well three years later my husband out of the blue says i've decided to grow my hair into a ponytail and i <clears throat> i look over one day and he's got the long ponytail exactly like she had described it so i had to call her and tell her she was 100 oh, percent accurate <laughs> <laughs> did anybody did he know that he was going to meet you he was led through synchronicity, um, and I mean, I could just talk about this for hours and hours, but yes, in many ways, he he wasn't going out that evening. His guides said, just, you know, go, go in here. It's important. Uh, he was able to see the spirit world as a child as, as well. Being around me, it brought it back out uh, within him. And but he was able to know where missing children were when he was a child. He could see people walking around huh. his house as well. He did go through my um, two year long training process, though. We're huge advocates of of training and, you know, learning the ethics uh -huh. of what we do. Boy, Asheville, you mentioned Asheville. They really got walloped with this Hurricane Helene. I was it's just shocked. breaking my heart. And I know so many you know, clients and, and colleagues that live there and have been in touch with them. So let's please all join together in, in prayers. It's it's just unimaginable what they're going through. Yeah, I had always thought that uh, Asheville would be safe because it's up in the mountains, uh, you know, that hurricanes wouldn't affect it, but apparently not. Uh, yeah. You know, and it's, it's really interesting, Rob, because I wasn't, I wasn't told what was going to happen, but one of my colleagues was going to South Carolina for two weeks to, to work there. And she said, do you want a little mountain riders retreat? Do you want to come and just get away for a little bit and, you know, be there in my house and, and write? And always I've learned, you know, I was hard headed for years and I didn't listen to guidance to my own guides, but I've learned to tune in and I would tune in three different times. Every time my guide said no, uh, uh -huh. you know, turn her down, don't go. And now I understand why, because their road, their everybody in right. the neighborhood, they're trapped in. Yeah. Apparently, all of Western Carolina, all the roads leading in there are, are totally yes. blocked. Um, yes, we, we had a. There's a little town uh, off the coast in the Gulf, uh, Mexico and Florida called Cedar, Cedar Key. Key. That uh, we went there for years and we were considering living there. We looked at houses and I remember the realtor, I asked the realtor, what about storms here? She said, well, there's like, they say it's a, uh, every 100 years, there's a big, the 100 year storm. And I just didn't feel that was quite accurate. Right. <laughs> and there's been several 100 year storms yeah. there since that, that time. And now it's devastating. It is devastated. Uh, people can't even go back there now. And uh, all the, all the businesses are gone. I mean, there wasn't that many businesses, very small town, but they're all gone. But it's a very tourist-oriented place. And uh, also, uh, uh, it was a fisherman's uh, place, too. It's big fishing. Fisherman's paradise. Paradise, yeah. So that, that's Heartbreaking. Yeah. Do your guides give you any information about climate change, how widespread this is going to be? Yes, absolutely, Trish. And, you know, um, 
probably about 15, 20 years ago, I would do, I did predictions and I would post them on my website. And then after a while, I, it was kind of getting depressing. And, uh, and my guides asked me to, to quit doing them and to quit posting them. I was also being, uh, watched from some, some people that I, you know, I, I anyway, I won't go into all that, but, uh, so I stopped doing them, but my guides asked me to start back with the predictions, um, probably about six or eight months ago that it was needed as long as I did it in a place of creating awareness and not fear. Uh, um, you know, because the last thing, and I'm a huge, you know, my book is about manifesting and co-creating. So the last thing I would ever want to do is, is create fear. But I, I do feel like, and what my guide said to me is when we are given the gift of prophecy, it's not meant to just be kept in a selfish right. way. You know, let's, let's share this information with whoever does want to receive it. So yes, sadly, um, especially in the last week, to I, I was told this was just the beginning of many natural disasters in uh, in the world, but especially our our country. I was told that 2025 was was going to be a, a pretty mm -hmm. intense year for um, seismic activity, um, more hurricanes, and I had predicted this hurricane. By the way, I had put it in my predictions two months oh. ago on my YouTube channel. I knew where it was gonna gonna hit. Um and I and I felt that there's three total uh large ones this year. So it, it, the message is for for people to listen to your own guidance. Um if you're if you're told not to move somewhere, listen to that. If like you said, Rob, the realtor told you that, but you used your <laughs> own intuition listening not to move there so that's my message let's listen to our own knowing our own intuition let's stock up on some supplies and and just be prepared because i i do feel there's certain areas uh, i've been getting some rumblings of the new madrid um for a, a while uh, i feel that that's a potential very strong potential in 2025 for the new Madrid quake, which kind of goes up uh -huh. through the Mississippi River area. Now, are, you're in you're in Mississippi, right? Yes. Are you in I'm a in safe this, area? You know, I've been told that uh, we live in a lake. Um, I've been shown that it will flood. Um, my colleague got the message that it was going to to flood. My, I am going to be moving um, <laughs> and I'm waiting for my guides to say when I'm, uh, they've kind of given me a uh, March timeframe. So that kind of gives me a little bit of a clue of when the new Madrid, because areas of Mississippi will, will flood. And mm -hmm. again, I pray that I'm wrong on these natural disasters. I would never want to be more wrong on, on anything than something like this. Uh -huh. You know, it wasn't too long ago that uh, we were kind of making fun of these uh, people who predict hurricanes, the scientists, in that they're in the University of Colorado, and, you know, they're up in the mountains in Colorado and making, you know, predictions about uh, hurricanes, and they were, they had so many predicted for this year, and nothing was happening at all through August. And Their numbers are no, still way down, though. Yeah, right. The, but uh, all it takes is one. All it takes is one big one like that to really wake right. them up to that awareness of the, how dangerous they are. So you uh, you were raised uh, Southern Baptist in the Deep South. Hmm. How, how did you uh, have the courage to come out of the psychic closet? <laughs> well, I I had a lot of questions that you know with organized religion. I witnessed a lot of hypocrisy, and you know the all loving creator God that I personally have a relationship with did not fit in with some of the horrible things that were being preached about. And then also being taught that what I do uh, is evil and of, of the devil. And, you know, I knew that that was not the, the case. So I, I left organized religion uh, years before I came out of the psychic closet so it was kind of a graduated uh stepping stone 
Yeah. I was one one day over at a friend's house who was going through a lot of changes. So I brought my tarot deck, and a husband said, "No, no, you can't do that. This is evil." I said, "Okay, I'm out of here." <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's wow. amazing how people react. It it really is. Yet they will listen to you know the 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 prophecies of everything written in the right. Bible, which by the way, man wrote. You know, it's yeah. like, it's, or they'll say, <clears throat> "Well, no, they channeled that from God, but we're not supposedly having the gift of channeling or prophecy or using the modalities." It's kind of mind blowing. Yeah. Hmm. So in your okay. book, uh, oh, go go ahead, Trish. No, I'm just going to ask her about the law of attraction. Do you know? Do you know Esther Hicks? I don't know her personally. I know uh -huh. her work. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, so we... how is your book? How how is your approach to the law of attraction different? How does it differ from hers? Yes. Great question. I have always been a master manifester throughout my entire life, and I followed the teachings of the Law of Attraction. Um, but what happened was when I wanted to have a, a biological child, I suffered five miscarriages. And no matter what I would do, and I, I would each time I would follow more teachings from the Law of Attraction. Mm -hmm. and, and then I named my, you know, I, I knew she was going to be a, a a daughter and I named her and then I, you know, own and own and own I the mantras. I, I I did everything possible. And each time the the miscarriage would come at nine weeks. And so um Jeez. after the after my hysterectomy and coming to the grief in the terms of knowing that I would not be a biological mother in this lifetime, I also went through what I call in my book perceived manifestation failure because on top of the grieving i felt as if i had failed mm -hmm. at the law of attraction because i did everything all the steps so i went on a journey and a quest to find out the reasons why and after it was about a three-year period and i decided to write the the book manifesting your magic in the 5d because i learned that past lives, soul contracts, and other spiritual laws play into manifesting as well. It's not just the law of attraction. The law of attraction uh -huh. is just one ingredient, uh, you know, one brick in the foundation, so to speak. Hmm. It's a tough lesson, though, with five miscarriages. Wow. Yes. You know, and I, and I feel like, and a lot of my clients over the years, Trish, would have readings and say, you know, I've done everything in the law of attraction teachings, but I haven't been able to manifest my soulmate, or I haven't been able to manifest the career of my dreams. You know, why is this? So we look at the soul's blueprint, and this is where the Akashic records come in as well, because if we can look at our blueprint and see what we, with our own free will, which is another spiritual law that I talk about in my book, we decided before we incarnated uh -huh. what we wanted to achieve, who we wanted to meet, and also the soul growth challenges to help our souls evolve because the the largest soul growth comes from our challenges, mm -hmm. not from our successes, right? What so when souls are making these decisions, what do they have the help of other spirits? Yes, or, okay. yes. Our spirit guides are right there with us. And they, you know, they can look at all of our past lives. They could look at areas and different people too that are going to be in our in our lives. And we've channeled about this. Um, my husband and I were part of an experiment through the uh, Robert Bigelow Institute, oh, the Big Six Experiment. Right. And we channeled for eight months answering questions. And one of the questions was, um, is there fate uh, and destiny or is there free will? And mm -hmm. different mediums across the, the country were part of this and nobody could know what the other mediums were getting. And it's been published in a, in a book now. But what we channeled is that it's a mix of, of the two. 
So the fate and destiny part is in our blueprint, but we also have the spiritual law of free will to alter, change those contracts as we go along the way or choose not to listen. You know, I know myself, I was uh, pretty hard headed for so many years and a little bit stubborn. And even though I would get guidance from my spirit guides, I would choose to be stubborn and think that, you know, my ego knew best and not listen. And we have that, that free will right to, to do so. Now you said you knew that this was a daughter. Have you met this girl in this yes. life? Okay. Uh, well, I mean, in spirit still, yeah. she, it, yes, yes, I, I have. And, uh, I, I named her Jackson and uh, I changed my name to, to Jackson after this, the city of my birth. And uh, and I honored her. I was going to name her Jackson. And huh. so that's where my last name came from and well, honored has, her. Has she incarnated? No. No. Okay. She's waiting no. for you. <laughs> yeah. She's she's on the other, other side helping. Oh, interesting. So I have yes. another another question related to uh, climate change uh, and things that are going on. You're, you said you're seeing more changes and more disruptions uh, mm -hmm. with with the weather and the climate. Uh, is even coming up next year, uh, we're thinking we've been thinking for quite a while of getting out of South Florida, where we are near the West Palm Beach area, and uh, moving up closer to our daughter who lives in Orlando. And I wonder if you can see anything about the Orlando area. It's a little further inland. Would that be safer? Is that going to be? It's under, also uh, higher. Yeah. We're at uh, 10 feet above sea level here. Yeah. Yes. What I can say, Rob, is it, it will definitely be safer than the coastal areas of, yeah. of Florida. My my clients that either live on the coast of Florida or are thinking of moving there, they're, they're you know, the guides have just come in and said, again, listen to your intuition. It doesn't mean that everybody that lives there is going to be in danger. But I do see a lot of the coastal areas, and I've seen it for years, having a lot of effects of the of the climate change. The other areas, the coast of North Carolina, um, and I mean, I was predicting that, and now it's, it's happening. There's houses floating away. Mm -hmm. um, on, on the coast of North Carolina. We're just in the midst of the climate change and, and I feel like it's going to intensify. So, you know, when we've seen these changes that might take 10 and 20 years to, mm -hmm. you know, see the effects of it, I feel like it's going to come much, much quicker. You know, back in 1973, I tell everybody this, I had a dream that I was in a rowboat headed to, and I was rowing towards the Bahamas because South Florida was underwater. That dream has always stuck with me because it made, when I woke up, I thought, why would I be rowing to the Bahamas, which is almost <laughs> lower than, you know, I mean, it has some mountains, but nothing, you know, most of it's about 10 feet above sea level, just like Florida. Yes, that's interesting. Well, sometimes that our guides will just give us whatever analogy that'll help us stick with us mm -hmm. and our knowing. And that's the thing too with predictions and timing. I mean, the other world, you know, time space doesn't exist uh -huh. like it does here in our dimension. The same. I mean, I was I was told to leave Southern California in 2012, and another one of my colleagues was getting the same visions right. because I felt like the big quake was was coming then and you know it still has not happened but you can see the activity is right. increasing now um so I would feel like it would be safe for you to listen and yeah. really pay attention to that dream Trish mm -hmm. and not take a robo to the Bahamas <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right <laughs> exactly exactly <laughs> yes yeah. and I and I do feel that um Orlando, uh, it, I, I don't see things going that far mm -hmm. inland. I, I see a lot of increase in wind activity, but again, but again that's almost everywhere. Um, yeah. You know, I, I've seen that increasing dramatically, whereas before, if we would have a windstorm, it might be, you know, 40 or 50 miles an hour. And now I'm feeling like these windstorms are going to be 60, uh -huh. 70, 80 miles an hour mm -hmm. that are going to come out of 
nowhere. So there's a lot of reasons that this is going on, but I feel like you would be a lot safer in that area for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the additional spiritual laws uh, that enhance and uh, harmonize with the law of attraction? Yes, great question, Rob. So two of them that are, I call them the pillars of the law of attraction are the law of action and the law of vibration. So we understand frequency and energy, and we understand how powerful our thoughts and our words are. So if we're wanting to manifest something and we start thinking about it, the next step is the spiritual law of action, which tells the universe that we really are serious about what it is that we're wanting. So in other words, if we are wanting to make a, a move, we start talking about it, we start saying, okay, if we do this, it will be Orlando. Mm -hmm. And and that's and we start looking into, okay, what's the housing like there? So that's the spiritual law of action. By doing that, that creates the spiritual law of vibration. Mm -hmm. And everything is timelines. What my guides have shown me as well is the reason that, and especially those who have been on a spiritual journey, who have integrated more of the fifth dimension into our lives, there's more timeline potentials. It's really interesting and fascinating because it's it's more of a co-creation type of scenario because we've done our shadow work, we've learned our blueprints, we've understood our past lives. And so part of this co-create co-creating comes in and that that vibration creates a wave of energy. And as long as it all corresponds with our blueprint and our soul family, then it becomes effortless and we start listening to the synchronicities. I, I heard that you, you have a book on yeah, synchronicities. Several of them. <laughs> yeah, several. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's synchronicity. It's so important. Yeah, it really is. I mean, it does become a guiding force. Yes, yeah. yes. And the and that spiritual law of vibration is, is part of the energy that brings in the synchronicities for us, you know, to kind of have those pebbles to guide uh -huh. our, our way. So do you think that this synchronicity is a spiritual law? Um, I feel like, yes, uh -huh. yes, signs and synchronicities. Right. Um, or you can look at it as a tool. I kind of chose um, the 10 spiritual laws in, in my book that really were talking more about uh -huh. manifesting. Right. That kind of go <clears throat> along with it. Um, so I, I would say signs and synchronicities are more of tools uh, that okay. our guides use. It's kind of like you can use tarot cards, as you uh, know, Trish, or the pendulum. You know, those are spiritual tools that help us with our manifesting. Well, astrology does the same thing. Like I was looking at the stuff that's coming up in 2025. It's kind of shocking. You know, you've got, really? you've got the four slowest moving planets changing signs all in one year. That's rare <laughs> wow okay so that's probably that definitely then goes along with the yeah. predictions that i'm seeing as as well so you're seeing mm -hmm. that as an astrologer yeah wow it's gonna be, that's it it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a handful yes interesting but yes you're right astrology is an important mm -hmm. tool you know there there's so many different tools at our disposal to help us navigate our journey so was there any particular event in your life that led you to write this book on manifesting in the 5, 5D? Just what I had learned from, you know, why I was not successful. And so I started thinking about, and then I would have clients too asking me the same question and not understanding that they had read all the law of attraction material and followed it. And so I, I thought, you know, the, the book, The Secret, was actually published 20 years ago. Right. Can you believe that it's been that long? Exactly. And there there hasn't been an updated version, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So my book takes, you know, some of those same teachings, but it brings it forward 20 years because the consciousness level of humanity is ready to embrace the other spiritual laws and understanding the soul contracts and karma, you know, the spiritual law of karma. So there's so many different pieces. And I write in my 
book, I have such gratitude for the pioneers, uh, such as Esther Hicks and, mm. and, you know, the pioneers of the law of attraction movement, because they, they got us thinking about our, um, infinite potential, right. And, and helping us remember that we have the tools we, we can create. However, there's, like I said, there's, that's, that's one brick in the foundation uh -huh. and it's important to have the rest of the, the tools as well. Yeah. I have, you know, we took, um, an Esther Hicks cruise in the Caribbean. And so we had, what, a, is it a week, Rob? Anyway, she gave multiple hours of workshops that was a real treat, but it got me to thinking, okay, I had a lot of questions <laughs> and it starts, a lot of it starts with the animals. What, we just lost a cat. So what happens to their spirits? Yes, I, my full, and I have communicated with, with them, Trish, my belief is that they go to the other world as well. I believe that animals have souls. And I have also been shown that Humans and animals can also uh, incarnate as uh, each other. Now, it's not that often. It, it doesn't happen as, as often, but it, it does happen. And I have uh, uh, like one of the um, animal communication readings that I did, and this was through a telephone and it, I couldn't see the woman's apartment in New York. And I was talking to her cat and the cat was telling me that this was the first lifetime that she had been a cat or he, I apologize. Uh -huh. He had been a cat and that he was in a past life with her, but he had been her horse and oh. she started bursting out laughing. And she said, you're never going to believe this. She ended up sending me a picture because she had a saddle in her living room as part of her decor and that cat would lay up on that on that oh, saddle it's like what are the odds yeah um, that's so great. yes it's my story belief. yeah it's it's well, my belief that they do go so to they the do other come world. back and become friends again, friends again. <laughs> yeah yes yes in fact um four of our five dogs right now um are reincarnated uh, from different times one of the rescues, he told me that he was my German shepherd, Bruno, from when I was a child. So I ended up naming oh. him Bruno. We just rescued him. He's a, he's a blue tick hound dog. Um, and he tricked us. We weren't even plant. We didn't need another dog. And he tricked <laughs> us into, into coming home. Um, but my, my beloved Shih Tzu, who has been transitioned for two years, and before that, he was my cat. He still has not come back, uh, and he told me he would, but he's just not ready. Yeah, to keep waiting for for him to come back. So they have free will as well. Oh, that's pretty. I remember after one of our dogs died, I had a, a reading with an animal communicator, and she said, "I said, well, has Noah? He was also a golden retriever. I said, has Noah been with this before?" And she says, "Oh yeah, he was a squirrel in your backyard." And which made sense because he really enjoyed running around with squirrels, you know. Yes, I love that. Yeah, was... yeah. and, uh, we've had uh, three golden retrievers, and we've uh, we've always thought that you know uh, that there's like particles of human awareness that are in them, like part not not that, not that there's a a human being, a human living inside, but part of a human consciousness because they are so aware and and you know they they have a quite a vocabulary you know they they know so so much you can talk to them and and they're all different too this one is uh his his specialty is being stubborn i mean th this dog you know you can call him and if he doesn't want to come he's just not going to move you know? <laughs> that's hilarious yeah you know, i was standing yes. by the by the pool uh I think Trish wasn't here, and he he was laying here, and I said, "Nigel, come on out, Nigel, come on out and join the pool, join me in the pool." Uh, and he just heard that, "Join me in the pool." No, I'm not going out there. <laughs> he never goes in there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're very intelligent, and they teach us so much about unconditional love and really forgiveness. Do. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And he he also gets along with the cats. Whatever cat comes into this house, he's fine with. It. Yeah. That's that's wonderful. Yeah, one of your one of your cat. You you have the you said the cat that came up to you, Trish. 
Uh, and that's actually my daughter's cat that's staying with us. He's a black cat. His name is Binks. Okay. He has the ability to see the, the uh, fairy world, specifically uh, fairies. I, I was hearing huh. um, pix pixies and, and fairies with, oh, with him. So if you, if you see him looking okay. off and, and nothing's there, that's what he's <laughs> tuning into. Huh. Well, now we have two down. black cats because we also had a black cat, Nala, who, so, you know, he's having these two black cats <laughs> running around with this blonde golden retriever. It's kind of funny. <laughs> That's diverse, huh? Diversity. <laughs> so, Love it. Yeah. Uh, so you, you teach about the, the shadow and limiting beliefs. Uh, can you uh, help us understand uh, what that means, what that's about? Yes. So, mo so many of us uh, have been programmed and conditioned, you know, through families, religion, schools, society, to believe that we are not capable of achieving certain things, or either our ego mind through our own fears creates the realities in our um, our consciousness um, to, to keep us from reaching our full potential. So our, our traumas are stored in the subconscious mind. So when we go back to past lives, when we go back to our childhood of traumas that have happened, they get stored in that in that subconscious mind. So shadow work is about uncovering those traumas, getting to know every aspect of ourselves, because the spiritual law of polarity teaches is us that within each one of us we have a light and a dark uh -huh. um you know we have a light and a shadow <laughs> so the reason many people get triggered is they have not done their own shadow work they have not uncovered those stored traumas in the subconscious brain and when we can embrace all of that and go through the the healing it also helps us reach the super consciousness easier the way i kind of liken it is so if we have a very thick forest and we are trying to really see what's on the other side of that forest it's not as easy but when we clear out those trees then it's much easier to get clarity on what's on the other side so we're trying to get from the conscious mind to the super conscious mind clearing out that uh the cobwebs of the subconscious is really really beneficial and that's what i help people do now do you do you tap into the akashic records when you do that yes you do okay. yes yes now, i do well okay so can the akashic records be altered yes Yes, and it's it's one of my favorite things. I, I teach this at some of my weekend workshops um, that I lead is um, is changing our soul contracts. And it's it's a whole thing I lead everybody through um, and we we go to their records and um, you know, it's important to just do one at a time to take um, usually a person in our life that we're wanting to alter that and change that and we have a free will choice to either close out that contract or to amend that contract or to continue learning the soul growth opportunities from that very contract interesting because yeah. Rob, that's yes. the kind of thing that ken talks about yeah yeah no. So, Jill, I understand from your bio that uh, you attended Arthur Finley College uh, in England, which is the world's foremost uh, college for the advancement of uh, spiritualism and psychic uh, sciences. I wonder what that was about. And uh, do you consider yourself a spiritualist? I mean, that's actually a, a religion in a sense. Yeah, um, I believe some of the same things that they do, but I, I'm not part of the spiritualist um church so to speak uh, yeah. um but i i am a huge proponent in studying and education you know i trained there in england years ago i trained at omega um i trained in new jersey uh i trained at lilydale and i now teach yeah. at lilydale oh, in new york because there's nothing more dangerous in my humble opinion than an untrained psychic or medium because when somebody says, well, I was born with my gift, 
and I don't need any training. That is the ego talking uh -huh. because we all need training in anything we do, you know, to learn how to control our gift and rather than have it control us, learn the, the art of message delivery, learn the ethics around it, learn how to deliver a message and when not to deliver a message. So there's so many components and that's why I love teaching. I have an online school for those who can't come to my in-person school. Yeah. I've, I've trained over 200 uh, <laughs> students in Mississippi um, and the surrounding areas. So yes, training is super important. Have you ever been to Casa Dega? That's Lily Dale's sister yes. community. Okay. I have years ago. Really cool place. It is. It's very different. Yeah. I mean, it's unique in Florida. So, Trish, yes. Trish, Trish has done some workshops there yeah. at the, at the, it's one, a great of the book, place. one of the bookstores. Yes. Uh, and, I love uh, it. Yeah. Uh, one time we were there and Trish was doing, a, I don't know, I guess it was a, a tarot workshop. And we were just finished. And, Films uh, astrology. Astrology. Okay. So, uh, we were just leaving. Casa Dega and uh, and Trish got a, it was either a call or I think it was probably a text message uh, or email from uh, our friend Whitley Streber, and he says, uh, "Trish, uh, have you ever heard of Casa Dega? No. You know, you know, uh, I, I have a message that I should go there." And <laughs> we said, "Yeah, we just left." <laughs> you can't make it up. That's yeah. awesome. No, you can't. I mean, it's that that kind of synchronicity is like, oh, okay. <laughs> Yes, We're doing the right that's thing. all. I love it. Love it. Yeah, and yeah. and that's what's so cool about this world, you know. And uh, I I can get on my soapbox because it's why you know re religion tries to create such fear because you know it's easier to control uh, right. you know people when they are literally instilled with with fear. But this world, I cannot imagine living a, a world without the magic and the mystery of of so many different dimensions and the mm -hmm. other world. It's I incredible. Mean, do, you, do you see things becoming, people becoming less divisive in 2025? Sadly, I, I don't, Trish. Uh, sadly, and I mean, you know, I, I feel like in a lot of ways, it's going to get worse for, for a while, but it, it, in 2019, my guides, in November of 2019, right before COVID hit, um, my guides said there's an event coming that is going to affect everybody in the world. It's going to change the trajectory of mm -hmm. your life on this planet. It'll never be the same again. And they, they, I didn't know what it was specifically. I was not told that it was a virus. I was just told that it would affect everybody. But what my guide said is that there's two trains. And they said what's coming up is people will choose which train they want to, to oh, be on. Are they wanting to stay in the fear-based, divisive, third-dimensional reality? Or, or are they going to choose the fifth dimensional train of unity? Huh. And there'll be a time period over several years where people can still have the, the train come into the station and they're going to say, I'm going uh -huh. to get on that train. But there's coming a time period, and they showed it to me, where the tracks, like they're parallel right now, but they're going to veer off and there will be no going back at some point coming up. So... To answer your question, it truly That's depends on what your reality uh, is, you know, yeah. because my guides, I, I channel, I channel a, a group consciousness by the name of Solomon and Solomon has said it, it depends on what lens you choose to view the world from. Do you want to view the world in a very divisive, uh, uh, hateful way, or do you choose to view the world in the new paradigm and that's where your reality will begin anchoring. So, so are these like I, two different timelines? Yes. Is, uh -huh. Yes. But and what I've been shown is that the realities are splitting so much, and that what will happen over time is that the people who are in our lives that are choosing the third dimensional train, so to speak, for uh -huh. a metaphor to, to use, they choose that they will start 
gradually disappearing from our awareness. Uh And I'm witnessing it. You may be witnessing it. I've talked to so many people who are witnessing it where it's like they still know these people, Uh but it's almost like they're watching a movie. They feel a little bit disconnected from who they have been. Are you, are y'all witnessing yes, that yeah. to some? Yes, definitely. Yeah. What I yes. do, they, they disappear from Facebook for me <laughs> with, a, with a click. <laughs> you know, <I> brought, I, yeah. <laughs> it's we, a we, way to we, we, we have, or I have at least, uh, a lot of uh, Facebook friends uh, uh, related to UFOs and alien and all that, that whole field. And, uh, surprisingly, there's a lot of them that, uh, are on the other side of uh, what I would consider the shift that's going on in consciousness and uh, mm-hmm. awareness, uh, which is really expanding in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, but there's then there's this also this counter uh, uh, shift of, of another sort uh, that's going on to fighting it. Uh, I mean, do you see it that yes. way too? Yeah. Absolutely. And it, it's, it's truly mind boggling um you know how how things can be so vastly different in in the consciousness of of someone and another thing my guide started channeling uh at the end of last year is that the time has has come for that for us to sort of stop trying to talk people into believing what we believe or you know like that doesn't Guys, work. Don't even place <laughs> your work. life force energy <laughs> yeah. any longer. If they choose to witness how we live our lives, and by witnessing that, they decide to make the change. That's that's one thing. But my guy said, do not waste your life force <laughs> energy on yeah, that any longer. Now, are you familiar with uh, James Roberts' Seth books? You mentioned Solomon, so I thought. Yes. Okay. Yes. You should, you should write Solomon speaks. <laughs> yeah, that that was coming next. Um, my the book that I'm almost finished with now is Children of the New Earth, and I started channeling about the Golden Ray children in 2014, and so I'm trying to get that book finished. So that's the one that comes out, and then I will write the Solomon okay, speaks 100. Cool. percent Yes. That's yeah. great. So we, what, what what do you think of light language? Are you familiar with that? And do you do it? Uh... We, we, I am we, familiar with it. I love light language. I have done it in the past. It hasn't been coming in uh, recently. I'm going to say the last time the light language did come in was probably about maybe four years ago when uh-huh. I was channeling. So that's kind of interesting. Um, but I, I love light language. And you can feel the energy, even though we don't consciously know what's being what's being said. Right. But um uh, when I channel, I'm a full trance channel, so I have no awareness of what's coming through. So I have to go back and listen to the <laughs> recording afterwards. <laughs> Jeez, that that could be disorienting, can it? It is. It's it's disorienting, and uh, it does take me a little while to to kind of come back into my my body. You know, when I was channeling uh, years ago, uh, I've I've gotten used to it a little bit more over the years, but I remember I was on a retreat, uh, leading a retreat in Glastonbury, and uh, we were upstairs, and I had been channeling, and I thought I was fully back in my body, but apparently I wasn't, and I went tumbling down the steps, like I didn't even know the steps were there, so that that wasn't a pleasant (laughs) way to come back into the body, you know. (laughs) No, that, that could hurt. <laughs> yes, yes. Now, do you and your husband trade psychic impressions or predictions? Yes. Uh, my husband is, uh, he's a Reiki master teacher, a sound healer, a psychic. He's an incredible medium as well. We've done galleries together where we, um, it's called double demonstrations, where we connect to the same spirit uh-huh. communicator. Um, but yes, yes, we we love working with yeah, uh, cool. psychism. Yeah. So in your in your channeling, Jill, have you uh, had any contact with uh, alien beings from the Pleiades or wherever? <laughs> yes. That yes. Absolutely. Uh, the group consciousness consciousness of of Solemn is is from uh, ninth dimension of Pleiades. So okay. yes. Yeah. And I have had personal uh, UFO experiences, uh, galactic experiences, if you will, going back to childhood. The first ship. I was about nine years old and it was 
hovering. This was in Mississippi and massive ship um, hovering in my neighborhood right in front of our house. And so I've been able to connect and communicate with the galactics for yeah, a while. Yeah, there's a famous uh, case of uh, uh, Mississippi uh, two fishermen who were uh, contacted and abducted. And uh, yes, one of them I think is still alive. I see something on the internet once in a while from him. Uh, yes, interesting. I've heard about that one as well. Yeah. This Binks came in again. <laughs> he he senses you. <laughs> Yes, so <laughs> they funny. do. They will. Yeah, speaks. <laughs> so, um, Sweet. Sweet baby. you. So you have a new book. Uh, you're you're working on. Then you said, and this is about, yes, cho my, cho about children. Can you go a little more into that? Yeah, it's called the Children of the New Earth, <laughs> and uh, in 2014, I channeled about the new breed of children called the Golden Rays. Uh, that are that would start coming in between 2015 and 2017, and uh, my ego mind kind of argued, I guess you would, or questioned because you know I wasn't able to have children myself. So why am I channeling a book about gifted children? And <laughs> my guide said, "Well, you were a gifted child. You understand it, and part of your soul contract was to be a mother to many, and you know to be able to help." guardians um, understand how to work with their own sensitive and gifted kids. So yes, the golden rays come in on the 12th, uh, 12th ray. They've never incarnated on this planet. Uh, they're very wise. They've been on other planets and um, they have a lot of light and they ca came in to help mother earth and also help with the technology. So the diamond rays, the rainbow children and crystals predominantly are to help people, whereas the golden rays, their main purpose is to assist Mother Earth. Yeah. What about the indigo children? I've heard about them in the past. Yes. And I'm an adult indigo. The okay. indigos um, started incarnating predominantly in the 1950s up to the 1990s. And uh, the indigos were kind of the the first waivers, if you will. Um, and we we kind of did things in a more outspoken, kind of aggressive <laughs> way, like the, the the change makers. And then the crystal children came in and, and they were a little more soft-spoken on trying to, to bring in healing and things like that. That the activist, a lot of a lot of indigos have been activists in one way or another. Yeah. It seems like the the younger generation now uh, are are also very out there, outspoken. Our, our daughter's thirty five, and she says the the generation after her, she's surprised how much they will stand up to authority and speak out. Yes. What year was your daughter born? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah. Um, yeah. So she's she's right there on that on that cusp there. Uh, Crystal or indigo. Some of them, and it's kind of like astrology too. Some of them have uh -huh. the traits, you know, from right. from both, especially when they're incarnated on that cusp mm -hmm. uh, area there. But uh, the the rainbow children, they're the ones that really started help, you know, talking a, a lot about gender identity and mm -hmm. and you know yin and yang and male and female and and all all of that. So they kind of brought that wave of of awareness and it's yeah. just fascinating yeah well you know what's interesting our daughter for the summer is out in washington state leading whale tours and she is just fascinated with these creatures i mean well like for good reason i mean they're so majestic yes oh that's oh i would love to do that that's so amazing really yeah we've been is. out we've been out there twice and gone out on the boat with her and it's uh it's it's, incredible. it's yeah uh Sounds and, incredible. Yeah, and she knows so much about these orcas, especially, and uh, it's and we we watch the orcas, and uh, the orcas watch us too. Yeah. I mean, that was a interesting, and, interesting. Thing. You know, and she's tuned in to the to the yeah. animals, so um, that that's a huge trait of you know a, a, a star seed or, or these mm -hmm. sensitive and gifted children who are aware. Yeah, she also works with dolphins, but it's oh, 
I'm, I mean, th this in, is in like, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Florida, something totally. Their whales are just so much bigger. <laughs> they're right. right. You know, and they're, yes. Incredible. Trish, Trish, real quick, and I know we're getting close to the end, but I think, okay. I think the, uh, I think your mic got unplugged. Oh, when the cat jumped out of your lap. <laughs> okay, yeah. There you go. Now you're back. Okay, okay. now I'm back. Uh, yeah. He had to, he had to listen to Jill. <laughs> right. uh, yeah. well, Jill, tell people where they can get in touch with you about your website, your book, all yes. that. Yes, absolutely. It's uh, www.jillmjackson.com. I always tell people, don't forget the. M, because yeah. if you Google Jill Jackson, there's a singer named Jill Jackson, and I promise you do not want to hear me singing. <laughs> so it's uh, <laughs> it's Jill M. Jackson, and um, I've got my book here. It's oh, great. Um, Manifesting Your Magic in the 5D, um, and that's on my website under books. You can find it on Amazon along with the Mississippi Medium book. And then um, I have a High Vibe Tribe community as well, which is a lot of fun. We do three live events a month with channelings and um, oh, cool. interviews and huh. talking about spirituality. Do you announce those on your website? Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. It's great. It was great talking. Yeah. With you. John, it when's fun. this going to go up? Uh, that'll be two weeks from two weeks? today. Two weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll send you the link. And, thank you. Uh, and thank I, and you I so have, much. I have to this is I, so real, much fun. Real, real quick, I oh. gotta bring it I gotta bring it back down to the three D three D world uh <laughs> real quick. Uh for just a second because when Jill joined, we were talking about college football. She lives in Mississippi, so multiple choice <laughs> question. Ole Miss, Mississippi State, I don't care. Uh, Mississippi State. All right, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> My dad's from that area, so gotcha. I have to go with state. <laughs> gotcha. All right. All right. All right. Thank well, thank you, Jill. This lot, was so Jill. much fun. My oh, cats I loved, loved it. it. <laughs> yes, yes. Big hugs to the cats. Thank y'all so much. I appreciate it. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Thanks for joining the Mystical Underground. Visit www.themysticalunderground.com for the latest blog post and book info. Subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, or your favorite podcast app. Listen to the podcast at podcast.themysticalunderground.com. Follow Trish and Rob on Instagram at Trish and Rob McGregor. Follow us on Twitter at The Mystic Cast. Send email to podcast at themysticalunderground.com. And until next week, thank you for listening and stay mystical.